Let me start off by saying that the footage used in this video is only from the first two or three areas, as to help keep this review as spoiler free as possible. With that being said, let's get going. Dark Souls 3 is the final journey in a series that many initially hate, but learn to love through its daunting journey across grand castles, battered villages, swamps, and even dark cramped dungeons. If you're new to the series, you're in for a beatdown that is sure to test your steel as a gamer. If this isn't the first time you fought your way through one of From Software's monstrosities, well, then you're a bit of a masochist. The story has you play as an unkindled warrior set out to seek the Lords of Cinder and return them to the throne to help bring the world back to a healthy state. I say that because that's all I really know as a player. Now, this isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it oftentimes leaves players feeling left in the dark. Rest assured, as you progress throughout the game, meet and talk to other NPCs, the game is given a bit more context. If you still need more story, you'll be happy to know a vast majority of information is also held within item descriptions to help fill in the world. Seriously, read some of these item descriptions, they're pretty cool. If that still isn't enough for you, and you're someone who loves to figure out the lore of a universe, well then you've come to the right place, as this is a literal gold mine when it comes to story, but true to the Soul Series nature, you're going to have to figure it out for yourself. But as a whole, what story there is, it's good, and it keeps me interested, and it's presented to me in a way that keeps me engaged. But let's be honest, players aren't begging for more Dark Souls because it's riveting storytelling. Dark Souls 3 is an action RPG that demands as much out of your in-game character as it does the player itself, making sure the knight you play in-game has the necessary stats to compete with the horde of enemies out to end your journey, as well as the required player wit and skill to overcome any given challenge. Dark Souls game mechanics remain mostly the same, with some added refinement to help keep things fresh. The addition of weapon skills seem to take a cue from the trick weapons we saw in Bloodborne. Each weapon you pick up has a weapon art. Whether it be a special stance that lunges you forward to slash your enemy to bits, or a battle cry that buffs your own weapon damage for a short time. Weapon arts are governed by a new focus meter which acts as the magic bar found back in Demon Souls, limiting the amount of special attacks one can deal out before taking another swig of the Estus Flask. While the weapon art system adds a new layer of gameplay, I feel as though it falls short of its intended purpose. There are close to 200 weapons in the game, but many of them share the same skill. A great sword is almost always going to be a great sword. They share the same skill no matter what. Which leads me to believe that this idea wasn't quite thought out all the way, as it leaves so many of these awesome weapons you pick up along your journey just sitting in your inventory as it gathers dust. The level design here is amazing. Levels act as dense mazes that twist and turn the player about as you explore the world. Each area is filled with traps, shortcuts, and sketchy back alleys just begging to be explored. But do so at your own risk, because after all, we're talking about a Souls game here. Lastly, many of you will be happy to know co-op has returned, and it's handled beautifully. Simply set a password and help your friends slay some dragons or something. This game is absolutely stunning. So much so, you will actually find yourself taking a moment just to look around at the player environment, just to soak in the beauty. The level of design here once again helps set players up for some of these beautiful vistas along towering mountains, deep valleys, and dark stewing swamps to gawk at as we continue to travel through this world. Each environment does a great job of standing out from one another, but at the same time, blending into one another so seamlessly, it feels like a believable transition. Character and enemy design here is also commendable. Each enemy you can encounter has its own sickly thought out design to help evoke emotion deep within our minds and have us asking, what is that? I personally love to see some of the more grotesque enemies find its way into Dark Souls as it helped breathe new life into a game that is known more about its fantasy inspired design than its dark and nightmarish creatures. As a whole, Dark Souls 3 takes its previous performances into consideration, improves upon them, and then truly delivers a game worthy of high praise. Whether it be excellent level design, stunning visual set pieces, or the ass-kicking, soul-crushing, insane difficulty the Soul series is known for, it delivers at every mark. If you're a fan of the series, this is an easy buy. If you're new to the series and are wondering if this is the game for you, I would also encourage you to pick it up. The refinement of the series has led to the perfect starting point for one's journey headfirst into death. I give Dark Souls 3 a 9.5 out of 10. I've been Matt, thank you for joining me in my Dark Souls 3 review.